the form to four continuum accordingly it has been divided into four major sessions in session 1 named contacts we would like to provide you an idea about the primary production of broilers at farm level which is our subject of interest then about primary processing which involves several unit operations to derive the carcasses from live birds and then about further processing which results in the production of ready to cook and ready to eat ultimate products using different basic as well as special processing operations final final part of this session we are about to deliver a lecture on current scenario on commercially processed products available in domestic as well as international market in session 2 on safety concerns in poultry meat and their products we have planned to convey you about the food safety concerns in poultry production uh, production of poultry meat and their products in general and uh, and an elaborate discussion on certain important microbial and chemical hazards as well as some of the process induced toxicants that are related to poultry meat in particular in session 3 that is on strategies to control the hazards in poultry meat and their products we are about to discuss on meat inspection procedures during primary production Uh, sorry primary processing as well as prerequisite programs during processing of poultry then the possibility of automation of poultry processing that means product processing traditional uh, meat products processing automation then intervention technologies to control the microbial pathogens on poultry right then realizing the stress of listening a dialogue as a diversion from the regular program a topic on mental and emotional development and stress management has been included as mandated by atal academy finally a session on food safety management system auditing in poultry processing industry and regulation related to poultry processing have been included this session will help you to know how poultry meat safety is ensured in petty food business operations as well as large processing plant thank you one and all i request uh, that you all be attentive uh, if you leave some part because the majority of you from uh, food science faculty so and it would be probably it would be new to you uh, so if you attend all the sessions you can get a collective idea about uh, uh, poultry meat processing from the farm to the fork so now i call upon uh, dr prakash to deliver his lecture on primary production of broilers and the different types of management so here he is uh, dr prakash has uh, uh, several years of experience in the private sector about broiler production as well as he has four years of experience in teaching as a faculty so he i now i call upon dr prakash to deliver the lecture thank you Good morning to all. Uh, this is Dr. Prakash Asantosar in uh, Department of Poultry Management, College of Poultry Production and Management, Kozu. Uh, first of all, I thank the coordinators of this program uh, to provide an opportunity to deliver my uh, lecture in this platform. Uh, my topic of coverage is uh, primary production of broilers and different types of management. So, the first and primary question. what are we are rearing livestock we all know we are uh, we humans we are domesticating the animals uh, from very ancient period just for uh, using it as a conversion tool that means converting the low quality roughages into high quality edible protein for consumers because uh, from vegetable sources we can't able to attain all our needs so we need some necessary tools to 
uh, obtain our products as well as converting the available resources into a edible protein. Of the various uh, livestock we are rearing, chicken is considered as the best one because those goats are efficient convert, converters of resources. Because uh, we are cons consuming in production system, we are considering as a feed conversion ratio. There is a factor called as feed conversion ratio in which uh, compared to all the animals, avian species, uh, especially chickens, they are efficient converter of resources with a conversion ratio of around 1.6 to 1.7 we are attaining now. As well as they are having a better dressing percentage. That means uh, consumables to the live weight is better in chicken. Uh, before in depth we are going in depth, we must know the few terminologies. So what is poultry? Uh, as most of you guys are on food technology, so I think that it is necessary to uh, provide some basic terminology, uh, definition of the basic terminologies we are using. So poultry is nothing but domesticated birds which are raised for commercial utility. Okay, that means for food purpose, if you are rearing any avian species birds, it is considered as poultry. So examples are chicken, turkeys, duck, geese, ostrich, etc. In commercial uh, farm practices, basically we are uh, classifying the poultry into two major categories. One is layers, other one is broilers. So what is layer? It is nothing but the birds which are de especially developed and reared for egg production purposes. So basically as a food items, we are, from avian species, we are getting two things. One is egg, another one is meat. So uh, layer goats are nothing but they are specifically uh, reared for egg production purposes are considered as layers. We know that uh, only the female uh, birds can be uh, able to lay. So in the hatchery itself, the birds, uh, the chicks has been sexed and only the female birds has been supplied to the farm chain, farms where the birds has been reared and the male chicks has been discarded. So if layers is not our uh, today's topic of coverage, so we are in depth, we are going to see about the broilers. So broilers are nothing but the birds of either sex that is uh, grown for high meat production, efficient meat production. So uh, this type of birds can attain a body weight of around 2 to 2.4 kg of body weight within 5 to 7 weeks of age. So the so question may arise is, what is the need for meat? Because so many persons may know that uh, all the available uh, sources we may, may get it from plant sources. Then what is the necessity for uh, meat? So in as ICMR recommendation, an average person needs around 0.8 grams of protein per day. So uh, it. It shows that around male per, in our average sedentary male should take around 56 gram of protein per day and female should consume around 46 gram of uh, protein per day. Compared to other uh, protein sources, uh, animal sources, uh, it shows high biological value because most of the vegetable sources lacks some of the basic amino acids uh, combinations. So only the animal protein sources are complete in nature and provides all the essential amino acids for our vital functions of our human body. In which animal sources, uh, protein sources, chicken is considered as a mostly preferred by most of the peoples for the upcoming reasons. One is that chicken is considered as a lean meat compared to other uh, animal food, uh, so meat, chicken has low fat percentage as well as high bioavailability and better protein content as well as better conversion and yield. As well as it is almost cheap in nature compared to other animal sources. 
So the question may arise us, uh, mostly, most of the peoples in, uh, as well as the educated peoples, most of the peoples that think that the birds has been genetically modified, like uh, to grow the, attain the body weight, but it is actually wrong. So how we, uh, the birds are able to attain the body weight is purely depend upon genetics. So we may hear the word genetic selection. So it is nothing but if you are having a group of uh, population, we are selecting only a few to produce the progeny. So the birds which are having superior germplasm as well as superior performance are only allowed to produce offspring for the next generation. That is called as genetic selection in which there is no gene manipulation or genetic modification has been carried out. This genetic selection has been conducted for the past 5 to 7 decades. So that only the birds which are only 1 kg uh, by 10 to 12 feet, now it is attaining around 2.4 kg within 5 to 6 weeks of age. This is purely depend upon genetic selection in which no new genes are introduced into the population. Gene uh, population only the frequency of desirable genes which we prefer for producing the generation is only alpha. So what is gen genetic selection? In simple, if I have a flock of uh, cows, I have a uh, two set of uh, bulls. One is uh, white in color and another one is black in color. If I want black calves from my herd, herd of cows, uh, then ultimately I have to choose black bull to produce next generation because I want what I want, I want black cows to be, most of the uh, progeny should be black cows. Then ultimately I have to select the black bull to produce black cows. This is called as genetic selection. So the progeny which I need to produce, if I want a particular trait or character should be expressed in a uh, population, definitely I have to choose for the same character. This is called as genetic selection. So this is actually a quanti uh, qualitative selection. Similarly, quantitative selection means simple. That means if in case in humans, we, we may able to notice the fat, fatty child, child will uh, sorry fatty parents will uh, the child of the fatty parents will be always fatty in nature, and the uh, child of the lean parents will be lean. Similarly, in a flock of uh, in poultry, what we used to do, we used to select birds which are healthy in nature. So from the birds, we will obtain only the chicks of uh, oversize. So this selection process leads to a response in my flock. So this is called as selection response because the, my flock average is considered if my flock average is only uh, 2 kg, uh, sorry 1 kg. So if I am choosing a yeah, better parents to produce offsprings of next generation, automatically what will happen? The next generation flock average will move from 1 kg to 1.5, whatever it may be the according to the selection intensity, the population, uh, the selection pressure leads to change in the average of the next uh, po population, progeny population. This is called as, considered as selection response. So the continuous selection leads to a, create a selection response in the progeny population. So consider in case if there is a selection response of, uh, so question may arise, is it possible to create selection response that, that much of response? Because I already explained, almost five decades or six decades earlier, the birds used to produce only uh, a capable of able to produce only 1.5 kg of body weight within uh, seven, eight to ten weeks of age. But now the birds are able to 
produce 2 kg of body weight within 5 to 6 weeks of uh, duration or period. So the question may arise is it possible to achieve this much of uh, growth within a limited period of uh, 5 decades or 6 decades. So yes, it is actually possible. The difference we achieve in the production is mainly due to the difference in generation interval. So what is generation interval? That is nothing but the time duration between a child to a producing another child. That is in humans, it is around generation interval is around 30 years. Whereas in chicken, the generation interval is only 24 weeks. That means 21 uh, weeks of age for to produce eggs and another three weeks of age for the eggs to hatch. Okay, so we call it as incubation. The three weeks we call it as incubation. That means the period from the day of hatch to so the day of laying to day of hatch is called as incubation. So the generation interval in chicken is only 24 weeks. Hard rate is 24 weeks. So within a year, we can be able to attain obtain two generations in a year. So consider in the last five decades, around 50 years, we can have uh, Mm, we can obtain able to attain around 100 generations in a population. So the birds which are only 1.5 kg of body weight at the very beginning in 1960s or 70s, by continuous selection in the population, we can able to achieve consider in each generation or in each selection process if we are obtaining only a, uh, 5 grams or 10 grams of uh, Difference. So around 100 uh, generations we have taken from the last five decades. So ultimately we can able to obtain for in each generation if we are obtaining 10 gram difference, selection difference, and we are gaining a 10 gram body weight gain. So ultimately in the 100 generation we can able to obtain around 1 kg of gain. So the birds which are only 1.5 kg body weight in 1960s or 70s. The same in the same population, if you are continuously pressuring the genetic selection and uh, breeding, we can able to obtain 2.5 kg. So this is purely what we are obtaining today. Uh, production is purely depend upon genetic selection only. So in genetic selections, we are giving prior in the, uh, primary importance to the growth parameters in especially in broilers so we are giving importance to body weight marketage and feed conversion so uh, we know very well some of the genetic characters are negatively correlated so if we are giving some importance to certain parameters definitely some of the associated parameters will be uh, uh, which are negatively correlated used to deteriorate so example, the immunity, if you are giving importance to production parameters, automatic, uh, ultimately the uh, immune parameters also, which are negatively correlated, gets deteriorated and leads to uh, some reduction in its performance. So, so what we did, I want to produce a bird which should have all the basic qualities. So what I did? It is not possible to uh, produce a superman uh, which are having all the divine qualities and should propagate to the next generation. So what, what, what in genetics what we did is simply we are selecting, breeding different and uh, selecting the birds which are predominating a particular character. So in exam, uh, the picture here representation is clear. So I want a commercial table board which uh, should possess all the basic qualities of high body weight gain, better conversion ratio and better dressing yield. But it is not possible to uh, produce the progenies from the board to pass on the characters. So what I did, I am selecting certain population which are predominantly expressing a particular trait and I am going for three or four way process in which the birds of different uh, predominantly expressing particular character is crossed in a manner in three or four way crossers. I am producing a commercial table board which used to possess 
all this all the four basic qualities so in the uh, picture itself it is clear so i want a commercial board which are having all the four uh, characters definitely if i am crossing this board with the another of its uh, same category it won't produce a efficient progeny so what i have to do i have to go in reverse so from commercial table purposes i am going backward this commercial table board having uh, characters of all the four uh, better characters of all the basic traits so in in reverse in reverse if i am going parent used to produce uh, having a character characters of only yeah male parent used to have two characters and female par parent used to have another two basic qualities as well as which will not also it will not produce sufficient offspring so i am going again back so grandparent and pure line so in order to produce a commercial uh, table bird which are having all the basic qualities i have to maintain separate pure lines grandparent parent and commercial laying birds so this is uh, the basic genetic involved in production of commercial broilers so what are the issues we are facing we face in this uh, type of uh, gen genetic selection so this type of birds needs extra care so automatically for efficient uh, management purposes we are it is necessary or mandatory to rear the birds in intensive system of rear so we very well know in this uh, pandemic uh, situation there is a term called as social distancing so in intensive system of rearing in which in a uh, limited space we are rearing more number of birds so automatically the question of uh, distance is arising so the birds will, in case if any one of the birds which gets affected to a disease it may easily transmit the same to our entire flock so this is a major issue we are facing in intensive system of rearing the birds another thing is in intensive system the space availability is quite low uh, we are only allowing a scientific uh, space allocation of around 2 square feet maximum 1.5 to 2 square feet per bird so automatically the birds can't be able to obtain its new necessary nutrients from the ground so uh, definitely the nutrient availability of the bird is also a questionable so what we did in order to overcome the issues we follow some management uh, procedures in order to maximize the performance so we very well know the birds will used to express its true genetic we modify the birds to obtain a better genetic potential so what happens the birds are having be uh, better genetic potential but they can't able to express unless it's the proper environment is provided so we provided a better environment in management uh, rearing of broilers we provided a better comfort to the birds in uh, aspect of space as well as welfare so the birds will be used to express its true genetic potential as well as as i already mentioned in intensive system there is a risk for diseases so transmission of diseases it is only for, uh, occurs if a bird is get infected so now to avoid the issue we provided hygiene feed water and environment in which the birds susceptibility to diseases gets reduced as well as we are providing basic vaccinations to the birds to the commonly occurring diseases so the occurrence of diseases and transmission of diseases gets reduced and as well as we are providing uh, nutritious feed because the birds can't be able to in the limited space of rearing the birds can't be able to get its necessary nutrition for its growth so definitely we have to provide the uh, feed to the birds it should be of balanced and nutritious it supports the genetic potential of the bird the question may arise so what is the need for balanced feed as per the law of conservation of energy we know very well only 
the energy can either be created nor be destroyed. It will be uh, transferred from one form to another. That means we can't be able to, uh, although the birds are genetically uh, potential in nature, we can't be able to create uh, its own body weight. So we have to provide some inputs. Unless if we are providing some input, we can't be able to get an output. So that the birds which are 2.5 kg in nature with their 20 percentage of protein. So definitely we have to provide some uh, protein sources and carbohydrate sources in its feed to convert the roughages into a quality protein. So what are the common in order to achieve the conversion we are giving roughages or feed ingredients to the birds and the birds are converting it into a quality meat. So what are the proteins in feed? We are commonly adding uh, certain raw materials according to its nature of quality. So the first one is protein. So basically for providing protein in feed, uh, animal proteins or uh, avian feed, we are adding oil cake. The oil cakes used to be either from soya, which is a predominant uh, protein sources in feed, a sunflower, a groundnut oil cake, a rape seed, a season, or coconut, which are the basic uh, vegetable protein sources we are adding in the animal feed. Another one is DDGs. It is nothing but dried distilled grain solubles. So after utilizing the grain solubles, uh, grain starch portions, the residues are we are uh, which are uh, not consumable by uh, humans has been utilized uh, used to produce feed for poultry. Another one is fish meat and meat come bone meat. These are the basic protein sources we are adding in the poultry feed. For carbohydrate, uh, providing carbohydrate uh, diet, we are adding uh, cereals and grains. So basically, maize is the predominant uh, carbohydrate source for poultry feed. Another one is uh, bajra, kambu, ragi, rock, that means millets, broken rice, and wheat. So those which are unusable, unusable for uh, human consumption has been utilized for animal feed. For providing fiber sources, or which are nothing but a filler, we are using de-oiled rice bran and rice bran. For mineral sources, we are adding, uh, because uh, basically for uh, development of body, we need calcium as well as phosphorus. So providing calcium, we are adding shell grit and limestone as well as for providing phosphorus, we are uh, giving dicalcium phosphate and monocalcium phosphate in the feed of poultry. So this is all about feeding and uh, in systems of rearing, uh, the birds has been in different manner, it has been reared in, uh, in according to the place and necessity, it has been reared in different ways. So basically, we are um, classifying the uh, rearing systems into two based on the uh, number of batches we are rearing as well as the rearing methods. So in number of batch in, uh, batches we are rearing at a particular point, we are classifying the system of rearing into multiple batch system and early knowledge system. So in multiple batch system, in order to support the continuous market supply, uh, the farmers used to in a farm complex, the farmers used to rear multiple age groups of uh, birds. That means in every week, as I already mentioned, the marketing age of broilers is just five to six weeks of age. In order to supply uh, weekly uh, bird, uh, the birds in weekly manner, they used to procure the chicks in every week or bi-weekly. So at any time of, uh, at any point of time, the different age groups of birds are reared in the particular form. So here the management as, uh, is easier with this uh, method of the uh, management, uh, sorry, rearing, the management is quite easier because the persons may uh, used to see each and every batch. So the diversified, so division of labor is much easier in this system of uh, rearing. But the problem in this system of rearing is disease control is quite difficult because in case if the 
a particular disease is affecting only an old age group means what will happen the disease is to be in continuum uh, in the farm premises so it needs quite uh, management is uh, quite difficult in case if there is any disease occurrence this type of rearing is mostly suitable for the in independent small farmers is that still it is in practice only by a very few small farmers only and another system of rearing is all in all out system so here in a particular shed only a one batch of chicks has been reared in the entire farm premises that means if my farm capacity is around uh, 1000 birds if i am able to rear 1000 birds means i will procure 1000 birds and i will rear and i will market it and after the marketing the birds will uh, shed will used to be continuous uh, thoroughly clean and after allowing a down time of around 15 days that down time is nothing but provision of gap between marketing age as well as procuring next batch of chicks is called as down time we are allowing a down time of around 15 days in order to break the disease cycle if any so in case if my farm is gets affected by certain diseases so i need uh, to i need time to break the disease cycle so now uh, for that i am giving a down time of 15 to 20 days in which the disease cycle gets uh, broken down so the next batch of chicks we won't get the diseases in continuity so in this system of rearing the performance used to be much better compared to the multiple batch system the reason is the continuity of this disease get broken another thing is another system of rearing is free range or extensive system of rearing in which the birds has an access to outdoor during rain during the day time only uh, the birds the shelter has been provided in a uh, uh, space open space uh, to get its shelter during the night time as well as to uh, protect it from predators as well as from unfavorable climatic conditions so in this system of rearing we won't provide much feed or ba balance the feed to the birds the birds will obtain its feed from the natural vegetation only so they used to grow quite lower because the natural vegetation won't provide enough fuel for to augment its genetic potential so automatically uh, the growth rate used to be much slower but the quality of life uh, the bird life used to be much better um, so in this system of uh, rearing uh, endoparasitic infections as well as uh, some of the basic uh, bacterial infections are quite common the reason we can't be able to can provide uh, hygienic environment in a very large open space so the diseases are quite common in this type of uh, system as well as predator issues are uh, also very common in this type of free range system of rearing and the intensive system the birds in which in order to uh, provide proper management conditions we are rearing the birds in a limited space but the uh, in a pakka better and uh, environment so that the welfare of birds will not be get affected so this system of rearing has been practiced especially for the efficient use of resources that means especially space feed labor and other resources so in intensive system automation is quite easily possible as well as uh, the management of uh, birds is quite easier because we, we have to monitor only a limited space so in case the birds are showing any discomfort we can usually easy to uh, rectify the issues and making well uh, better uh, environment for the birds to express its potential so in this system of rearing Uh, the production used to be uh, better compared to the extensive system so the intensive system itself based on the housing facilities we are provided it, ha it has been again classified into deep litter slatter flow system and wire pole system and cages usually for rearing commercial broilers we are preferring only the deep litter system of rearing because in slatter and uh, cage system of rearing 
uh, due to heavy sizes, the birds are uh, not able to uh, walk properly and used to obtain some uh, leg disorders and ultimately leads to uh, breast blisters which affect the uh, quality of meat produced as well as the initial requirements to establish this type of housing systems are quite high. So deep plus system as I already mentioned for rearing commercial broilers it is the most economical and widely practiced system in India. So the floor uh, in the house itself the floor is used to, usually used to cover with absorb, absorbent materials in order to absorb moisture from the pieces as well as to provide cushioning effect to the birds. We call this absorbent material uh, as litter material and uh, thickness of the litter material used to vary from 2 to 5 inches depending upon the climate conditions. In summer the thickness of the litter material used to be 2 inches and in winter in order to uh, provide comfort from the chillness we are providing a 5 inches thickness to the uh, litter material to the birds. So this is a picture representing the uh, deep water system of rearing birds. So in the open space the birds used to be uh, the floor space used to be covered with the uh, wood shavings or uh, padding dust, which acts as an absorbent material as well as uh, bedding material for the birds. Another thing is cage system. So, so cage system of rearing actually it is quite common for rearing commercial layers because those commercial layers which are especially reared for laying eggs are quite low in body weight, uh, this body weight is quite low. So those birds are best suitable for uh, re reared in uh, cage system. Here the birds uh, floor space of around 0 0.6 to 0.5 feet has been provided. Um, as I already mentioned in cage system we are preferring to rear birds of uh, commercial layers uh, and they are in which the collection, egg collection is quite easier as well as the uh, eggs used to be cleaner compared to commercial eggs which are reared in deep litter system. Uh, this system of rearing is not practiced in uh, rearing broiler, commercial broilers which are meant for meat production because the issues of breast blisters and leg illness used to be common which reduces the meat quality during processing of birds. So, in which the picture represents the, this is a battery cage in which the birds are, and the cage is used to be racked one above the other uh, in order to reduce floor space requirement. So, this is actually the most intensive system of rearing birds. The only uh, we can in this system we can be able to rear more number of birds in a limited space. But it needs extra management and care as well as extra ventilation requirement. Another thing is slatted floor system. So in slatted floor, uh, iron rods or wooden, wooden reapers are used as uh, floor material. So with a specified gap of around uh, one inch gap, the rods or slack uh, reapers, wooden reapers used to be uh, fixed above uh, high, at a height of around two to three feet above the ground level. So the birds will uh, be over the uh, wooden reapers or iron rods, and the pieces which is, uh, will be laid on the ground. But this system of rearing it needs higher invest, uh, investment. So this this system of uh, is usually practiced in uh, rearing breeder chickens. That means in order to provide welfare, animal welfare as well as in order to ease the uh, queen egg production, this system of uh, rearing birds has been practiced in rearing uh, breeders, parent birds. So this is an image showing a. Uh, Slatter floor system of rearing commercial, uh, sorry, breeder, broiler breeders, in which only uh, 
this is actually a slack term floor system that means in which 60% of the floor space is covered with slats and another 40% used to be in floor space so the boards will prefer uh, the boards which are preferring floor used to prefer floor system and those are boards which are preferring slats slats they used to be on the slat boards the new trend of rearing uh, boards is called as environmentally controlled system so uh, because of continuous genetic selection we improved uh, we produced the modern strains which are capable of producing i meat but this type of genetic potential used to be expressed only under the optimal environmental conditions so we, uh, under adverse uh, physical uh, climatic conditions the goats can't be able to express its true potential so what we did is we provided an optimal environment in which the birds which are uh, easily express its true nature so what we did uh, it is impossible for us to modify the outside climate so inside the shed itself we modify the internal climate which are regardless of the outside environment the inside environment inside the sorry, environment inside the shed used to be altered according to the specific needs of the birds so the very comfort zone for the temperate and uh, under the uh, comfort zone the birds used to conserve the energy for product, uh, production that means the energy which is, which is mainly utilized for maintenance purpose the body maintenance has been diverted for production system so ultimately our efficiency of production is to be improved compared to the open housing system so this is called as environmentally controlled system in which the temperature used to be uh, managed from 35 to 20 degrees celsius depend upon the age actually in the very initial stage of its life cycle the birds can't be able to adjust its body temperature so in the very beginning in the first week of in first few weeks of life we are used to provide around 35 to 30 degrees of, uh, celsius of uh, temperature in the very beginning and afterwards we reduce the heat and we provide a temperature of around 20 degrees celsius at the uh, end of marketing age so uh, ultimately the birds used to uh, conserve the energy which is uh, required for maintenance and divert it for production efficiency so this is an, an easy uh, picture of an easy house in which the entire housing system has been uh, totally covered and uh, each and every physical parameters like temperature ventilation humidity uh, everything has been uh, provided to the birds as per the requirement depends uh, using uh, sensors okay till now we have seen the basic uh, production systems Uh, involved in so very uh, various systems of rearing and the very basics of uh, uh, rearing birds. So, uh, in specific to the uh, training program, what are the production parameters we are or production policies we are adopted in uh, producing uh, meat birds as well as has been discussed hereafter. So, basically, in The aspect of food safety, the FAO uh, has classified uh, predominantly the contamination into three major categories. One is microbial, uh, microbiological contamination, another one is chemical contamination, and third one is physical hazards. So, in production, primary production center, the physical uh, hazards is almost nil. So, we are not uh, in production center. There is no physical uh, hazards has been entered into the production section. So, basically. and in production systems we are keenly uh, monitoring only the to avoid microbial and as well as chemical contamination in the food chain so the common microbial contamination in the primary production centers is bacteria virus and helminths so in bacteria primary the basic uh, microbial contamination uh, from food chain is salmonella Campylobacter, Listeria, Clostridia, Enterococci, and E. coli. Of these various uh, bacterial species, 
which are causing uh, football disease. Uh, the major uh, hazard caused in primary production is from salmonella and E. coli. So the primary virus uh, which causing football uh, contamination is avian influenza, the new zoonotic uh, one, but which is non-hazardous in processed poultry products. We very well know that it is quite fragile in nature. Only the uh, influenza has causing much issues in production center and not in the processing center. So we can omit these things also as well as health and prayers which are actually non-zoonotic in nature. So in order to reduce uh, microbial contamination in the production systems, we are uh, following some standard operating procedures, which is nothing but uh, uh, incorporation of uh, high biosecurity, water purification, feed sanitation, and microbial screening. So, biosecurity is nothing but it is an integrated approach in order to reduce the risk of diseases in birds. Here we are applying some logical and sound principles to reduce the incidence of diseases in the farm premises. So basic uh, biosecurity uh, uh, measures we are following in farm uh, complexes are restricting the movement of uh, these uh, humans as well as uh, vehicle as well as entry of uh, wild birds. Uh, Straight uh, animals, pests, likewise. As well as in case, because in a farm complex, it is uh, unavoidable um, to uh, avoid the entry of vehicles. So, before uh, allowing any vehicle inside the farm premises in the production systems, we used to thoroughly sanitize the or disinfect the vehicles before allowing. For that purpose, we are using uh, specified wheel bars as well as disinfectant sprays before uh, allowing the vehicles inside the farm premises, as well as to avoid the entry of uh, stray dogs or stray animals. In most of the farms, we are having a complete fencing uh, provisions in which the uh, entry of this is through wild animals or uh, stray animals has been avoided. As well as improve the efficiency of biosecurity, the construction approach itself we are following uh, ample distance between two sheds. Uh, in case if I have my farm complex having multiple sheds, we are basically allowing a proper distance between two sheds through in which in case if any one of the sheds have been infected with a particular diseases, the spread of diseases from one shed to another has been discontinued by allowing proper distance as well as we are making some necessary precautions to avoid the entry of pathogens inside the farm premises for that we are basically having a uh, footpath because mostly the pathogens used to enter into the farm uh, complex via humans only so basically, uh, we are having a foot tips through which uh, disinfectants has been applied. Uh, so each and every time with the labor or uh, uh, supervisor has entered into the farm premises, definitely they have to go through the biosecurity measures. So the uh, risk of uh, pathogen entry has been minimized. As well as the pathogen low is transmitted from one bird to another through dead birds only. So in farm, uh, mostly, in farm complexes, the birds has been scientifically disposed uh, by either incineration uh, or by proper disposal pit. So, so the another source of pathogen because already through biosecurity and biosecurity measures, we are in the production centers, we are reducing the risk of uh, pathogen entry. I'll, but the major source of infection is through water only. So it is a, which is a uh, main culprit uh, which conducts the 
diseases from one boat to another. So basically, to ensure the water quality, regular screening has been, uh, water sampling has been uh, practiced. The uh, quality which is the water should be of better quality has been only allowed uh, to consume by the birds. Basically, uh, for producing broilers, the water quality should be of high in nature. That means the poly compound should be either uh, it should be nil as well as the total counts of uh, bacteria should be less than 100 calorie farming units per ml. So basically, uh, the microbes used to enter into the uh, systems by means of biofilms because for uh, ease of management, most of the production farms used to be having automations. So the one, one, one thing is water the provision of water lines. So this type of water lines used to have biofilms due to continuous deposition of uh, algae and sediments. Uh, in order to reduce the microbial load, so regular cleaning of uh, biofilms has been carried out in the production farm. As well as to improve the water sanitation process, we are following either physical or chemical sanitation of water. For physical sanitation of water, we are uh, ongoing reverse os osmosis or ozonization or UV radiation, in which the pathogens which are present in the waters have been nullified and only the clean portable water has been provided to the host for consuming purposes. And by chemical sanitation, we are adding uh, permissible level, uh, approved level of uh, either fluorines or other chemical sanitizers in order to reduce the bacterial load in the water. And to ensure the quality of water has been, which has been provided to the uh, birds, regular, regular periodic uh, screening of uh, samples has been carried out at various points of Sources. That is only the, either the water sources, uh, water samples from the different points of sources have been uh, procured and has been analyzed for any bacterial contamination. That means either the uh, samples has been taken from water source as well as overhead tank, pipeline, and consumption point. That means at third level, the samples have been procured and have been analyzed for any microbial contaminations. In case if we found that any microbial contamination in the water samples, we used to take necessary precautions to reduce the load, microbial load, either by uh, eliminating the source of contamination or otherwise removing the water source system. Another important source of pathogen entry into the farm is via feed, because well, basically the pathogens will enter into the farm either by means of humans, otherwise from water sources and other by feed sources. Uh, water sources we are uh, have, uh, using sanitation measures to reduce the risk and for uh, re reducing the microbial contamination in feed, we are adding some uh, organic acids as well as we are going for heat treatment of uh, physical uh, raw materials because the raw materials which we are feeding to the birds has been procured from various sites and it may be easy to get contaminated either from the harvest area itself or otherwise during the storage or during the transport it may be easily contaminated by either the wild birds or otherwise by rats or rodents so now to reduce the uh, contamination microbial contamination we are uh, ensuring the uh, safety. We are adding some organic acids as well as we allow heat treatment of around 170 to 176 degree Fahrenheit for two minutes in order to reduce the pathogens if any present in the raw materials. And as I already mentioned, basic. Uh, microbial contamination present in the broilers is salmonella, which is a high risk incidence commonly occurring in the food chain of broilers. So, now to reduce the uh, 
bacterial population, regular screening has been, microbial screening has been uh, conducted at various places. That means if, uh, if any bird is uh, dying due to in our rearing time, we used to examine the birds as well as samples of water and feed and uh, the environment because in all the aspects we are taking necessary care to reduce the microbial contamination in the production parameter in which for that ensuring the safety of uh, food so what we used to do means we evaluate the quality of sanitation hygiene treatments by conducting regular microbial screening so what are the common uh, samples we are uh, doing for uh, lab investigation is microbial screening is either we used to collect, collect the samples from the lab birds as well as dead birds, serum, swabs, eggs, tissues, feed and water. And to control the salmonella, uh, which is a major threat in the production and, uh, centers as well as causing uh, food contamination, we are following a specific salmonella control program in the production center in which we are periodically screening the uh, birds. That means the control program has been started in the very initial level itself. Before uh, that means table commercial birds itself, before the parent in the parent population itself, we are conducting the periodical screening. That means at breeder farm level itself, we are conducting the periodical screening in which we are taking regular microbial swabs as well as uh, serum has been analyzed and break open analysis of unhatchery eggs. That means in hatchery if you are, uh, if any of the eggs has been unhatched, we used to collect and examine for the reason to find out what is the uh, actual reason for the not providing uh, a penny hatch. So the first one is cloacal swab analysis in which the birds uh, fresh feces otherwise uh, has been collected, otherwise the uh, swabs from the cloacal area has been collected at least a minimum of 60 numbers from your farm. So, uh, under optimal uh, culturing to find out any pathogens, the samples have been analyzed for presence of any salmonella organism, if there are any, because mostly. Uh, the salmonella has been emitted via feces. So, in case if any of the samples has been uh, found out positive, tested positive for salmonella, it has been again the entire the flock uh, of uh, population has been wrote, uh, analyzed for salmonella. And in serum analysis, uh, we used to collect the blood and test it for presence of any salmonella antibodies, uh, presence of any salmonella antibodies. The blood analysis has been carried out different age, uh, periods of age. That means at the day old itself. That means if the chicks has been hatched at the time itself, the birds, the chicks has been uh, sacrificed and the blood has been collected and tested for presence of salmonella antibodies as well as before three weeks before moving to another shed. In case if I am rearing a bird in a particular shed and if, uh, during different phases of rearing, the birds has been transferred from one shed to another. So before three weeks of age itself, that means moving the birds from one shed to another, the samples, uh, blood samples has been collected and they has been uh, analyzed for presence of salmonella antigen, which is an antibody, as well as in the uh, production stage of breeders uh, producing, while producing uh, eggs once in every month the uh, sample blood samples has been collected randomly and has been analyzed for presence of salmonella antibodies actually uh, at farm level in order to use operations we are using rabbit plate serum agglutination test in which a drop of blood has been poured with a colored antigen of salmonella in case if the, if the any antibody is uh, present in the blood sample, uh, an agglutination reaction used to happen, in which uh, it indicates uh, it is indication of positive for salmonellosis. In case if we found out any positive samples, uh, we reject the 
eggs during the course of treatment and another thing is break open analysis of unhatched eggs so in the hatchery after incubation 21 days of incubation those eggs which are unhatched used to be examined for the uh, reason of un of unhatching for the means uh, reason for failure of uh, failure to hatch because most of the time, uh, times any salmonella organism is present in the food chain or uh, the cycle it causes uh, late embryonic mortality in the hatchery so we can easily able to identify whether the uh, failure of uh, to hatch is either by means of uh, mechanical failure or otherwise by means of microbial failure we can easily able to find out another thing is to ensure the quality of uh, feed we are regularly collecting the feed samples homogenized the feed samples and we used to serially dilute it and we analyze for any presence of any feed microbes microbes in the feed so basically the pathogenic we found out any pathogenic organisms in the feed raw materials we used to neglect the uh, raw materials and only those which are having acceptable level of uh, total uh, microbial count we let it to process for producing feeds this is all about uh, microbial contamination which are occurring in uh, the following process side uh, uh, now we are going to see about the basic chemical contamination what we are issuing in the production uh, cycle the first one is uh, the chemical contamination usually occurred in the production cycle either by means of uh, at the end of the production cycle either by means of feed otherwise via medication in feed usually we are facing issues of chemical contaminants that means uh, pesticides uh, residues of pesticides or uh, any chemical derivatives and another one is chemical contamination via biological sources that means toxins because mostly bacterial toxins and fungal toxins uh, used to occur in the raw materials of feed due to poor harvesting technologies adopted otherwise poor storage facilities what we are having in our uh, system of uh, system so mostly we regularly analyze samples for to reduce this type of contamination because the birds has been the birds are uh, life creatures those contaminations chemical contaminations as well as biological contaminations used to reduce the production performance of the uh, birds in case if we have provided high contaminated feed to the birds definitely the production performance of the birds used to be deteriorated so regular screening uh, of samples has been carried out uh, the scan uh, screening has been done by either physical test microscopy as well as chemical test which is the ultimate in nature here the samples has been uh, analyze the each and every sample has been analyzed before entering into the food system uh, producing uh, feed that means by spectrophotonic method we used to analyze both qualitative and quantitative analysis has been carried out to ensure the safety of raw materials in case if any contamination has been present basically we used to reject the raw materials in case if rejection is uh, un, uh, not possible means at least we used to dilute the feed with the uh, good one the dilution of uh, feed uh, raw materials has been carried out to reduce the contamination level below the permissible level uh, limit and as well as we are adding some toxin binders to neutralize the uh, presence of chemical contaminants so basically in order to bind the uh, chemical contaminants we are adding uh, active activated charcoals or uh, clay uh, materials we are adding to bind the chemical contaminants and as i already mentioned another one uh, common chemical contaminant is additional so providing medication that means which is an issue currently going on that means uh, in intensive system of rearing 
uh, usage of antibiotics to reduce the uh, disease incidence has been practiced in the very uh, very beginning of production that means around 1990s and 2000 uh, usage of antibiotic growth promoters has been practiced in which uh, limited amount of antibiotics are, uh, has been added to reduce the uh, incidence of diseases as well as improve the production performance it causes uh, antibiotic residues which is a major threat uh, uh, that means it produces uh, residues in the antibiotic, antibiotic residues in the environment which uh, is capable of producing antibiotic resistant bacteria so in order to avoid that issues uh, in order to avoid that issues a proper uh, in the uh, application of uh, antibiotics has been restricted in the animal feed and even for therapeutic uh, issues also only we are adding antibiotics in the production system uh, that also we are uh, providing proper withdrawal period of minimum of 7 to 14 days so in case if you are adding any antibiotic for therapeutic purpose of uh, rearing birds we are provided a proper uh, withdrawal period as well as in order to improve the uh, efficiency of production performance and reduce the microbial uh, threat we are uh, went for some alternative product that means non-nutritive feed additives that means uh, usage of essential oils and probiotics and, and acid base has been uh, uh, developed in order to reduce the usage of antibiotics in the production system so in the production system itself we are uh, ensuring the safety to reduce the incidence of diseases so basically in the production system we are rearing the birds in a scientific and humane manner by utilizing the efficient resources so we think that provision of uh, utmost we provided the utmost care to produce a, a surplus food material to the consumers So now I request all the participants to attend the uh, combined inaugural function that is being organized by ATAR. Uh, the link, respective link has been sent to your email ID. I kindly request you to attend the, this combined inauguration. Then we will join by 11 o'clock. 11.30 it will complete, we will join by 12 o'clock for the next session.